particularly enjoys the brighter photos. That's him at Icebox with King Vaughn. Um, that's Z. Then three. That's Z right here. More stuff with Sham. More stuff with rappers. Little baby Young Thug. Um, Twenty One Savage. Right. He's out here doing all this, all this crazy shit now. Um, it just grew and grew and grew. Um, and because Icebox is so connected to all these guys, he just kept on growing and kept on making videos for bigger and bigger people. And now he's like, I'm trying to get out of the music video game because he doesn't particularly like making music videos for these random rappers. Oh, I want you to make music video for me. But he's more trying to just get into like the business side of things. You know what's crazy is I remember when um, this dude Z literally had zero pictures on his Instagram. They didn't even have a YouTube channel. They did, I, I'll, I'll go through that. I'll go through that. Compared to all the stuff that like FaZe did solo, um, I stopped doing photography. I stopped working with FaZe. Uh, and at this point, I'd say like 90% of his photography career has been solo. Uh, so, I mean, the amount of stories that I'm going to have, FaZe is going to have like 10 times the stories. Maybe 20 times the stories, actually, because of all the Icebox stuff. At this point, he wouldn't even consider them like interesting stories. So this is Z, Desire. Their whole family is crazy rich, crazy connected. They're in a smiley family, by the way. And I remember when he had no followers. These are always verified, but these guys own Icebox. I'll just scroll through. You'll see everybody here. I wanna, I wanna hit up FaZe and ask him about this stuff. Oh, Icebox Rafi, Juma. So it's a Juma family. My dad actually knows their dad. I believe these two are brothers, Rafi Juma and uh, Zahir. And um, my dad knows their dad. His name starts with like a W or something like that. Per capita, the Smiley community is like stupid rich. But yeah, my dad had like a position of power in the Smiley community. So we got a lot of people's contacts and he knew everyone like vaguely. He didn't like have a close personal relationship with any of these guys, but he knew of them, you know? Actually, I won't show that yet. I'll, I'll tell this little story here. The, this dude, Rafi, it's his birthday party. It was at some bowling place. What happened was is James Harden shows up, stupid tall. That's Z. We're taking pictures, right? There's a dude who went, who came there, who brought like unreleased Yeezys. It's a crazy lifestyle when you really think about it. Like this stuff seems so normally to me. This stuff seemed like so like mundane. It's like whatever, but it's like normal people don't get to experience shit like this. And when I say it out loud, I'm like, oh, this is actually kind of interesting. So yeah, this dude brought unreleased Yeezys, the one with the thing on the side, the little teardrop looking thing on the side that uh, is the super reflective material. That one, like he brought that before it was released. Just like cool shit happens when you're around these guys, you know? Here's the crazy thing that happened over there. The younger dude, Z, I think he was the one who owned the Ferrari at the time, I'm not sure. But we were talking about stuff and he, he was telling us, he's like, yeah, Icebox is, uh, we're thinking about starting to do YouTube videos, you know? Right now we just have Instagram, but we want to start expanding into different social medias. We, we want to start doing YouTube videos. We're just looking for the right people who can help us with it. And I texted him and I sent him some videos and actually I have a screenshot of it. I sent him this, and then I sent some videos after that. November 19th, 2017. Pay attention to this date, 2017. This was like a week before I got kicked out of school. Let's go on YouTube real quick. Icebox, diamonds and watches. 1.58 million subscribers. Ah yes, the shorts are doing good. Yeah, I remember when this video dropped and it got like 4 million views so quickly. Good views, right? Let's hit the about page. 440 million views. And of course they probably make money from ads, but it's not that they really even care. They're doing this to promote their thing. And they joined pretty early because that's just when they made the YouTube channel, they made the email address. But let's see their l earliest videos. Let's scroll all the way down to see when their first video is. Actually, there were videos before this that were deleted, but their earliest video, March 5th, 2018. I texted him when he was telling me about it. November 19th, 2017. Like, damn, dude. I could have been that one. The guy managing the YouTube channel, I could have been that guy. It was so crazy to see because I saw them make the, I saw them start uploading, then they hit 1,000 subs, then they hit 10,000, then they hit 100,000, then they hit a mil, and the growth was just insane, dude. I couldn't believe it. And I could have been that guy who managed the YouTube channel. I could have been him. Oh well. Honestly, good decision on their part. Like I said, like, I suck at trying to visualize someone else's vision, but it was a crazy opportunity. The, the reason why I stopped is because I'm not the guy who can visualize somebody else's vision. I'm the guy with the vision. 
I'm not going to compromise my work for someone else. So it's a good decision on their part. But it just, it's, it blows my mind to see like, oh man, that's a real big opportunity that I missed out on. Even if they let me keep the ad revenue from the YouTube channel, they didn't pay me at all. I'd still be making hella money. And they'd probably get way more views actually, because I'd be incentivized to make sure the YouTube channel does well. But yeah, they probably made the right call. Like the videos are very basic. Like anyone can make these videos. These videos are not uh, complicated at all to make. I think coming ones. from Atlanta, we heard we heard you guys first. Yeah. Now we was back in here back yeah. in the day. Now y'all heard No Flex Zone when it first yeah, came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And no some shit before that too. Damn, when No Flex Zone came out, that shit was crazy. Shit was everywhere. Overnight. These videos are very easy, generic, mass appeal, right? They want to go for the masses, right? I would be doing all this crazy shit. I would be getting like macro shots of the jewelry. Uh, I'd be getting the rappers to like freestyle in the store right there, uh, doing little skits to like pretend we snatched their chain, uh, maybe taking something that they already got like their phone and icing it out. I can't do that obviously. I'm not the owner of the jewelry store. But like if I was in charge of the media, this is the kind of stuff I'd be doing. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a storyteller, not a, not a cinematographer. In order for that kind of job to be fulfilling to me, in order for me to put my all into it, I would need to not only have full creative control over the media, I would probably also need to be the owner of the jewelry store itself. So it's not, this is not the job for me. And honestly, they made a good call by picking other people. Actually, FaZe doesn't even do their YouTube channel. FaZe, I, I believe, helps out here and there, but he was mainly managing IG stories like every day and then doing the TikToks. And he basically grew their TikTok from nothing to like a couple of mil followers. 6.9 million followers. The skits and stuff that he started doing lately started to get big, big views. FaZe knows how to make viral content. FaZe was showing me like the plans on like, okay, we're gonna have this like mob boss character and this sort of, oh, they did a freestyle for the, yeah, okay, so yeah. He's got the same ideas. I would literally live stream. I'd bring them in the store and literally stream live like some Aiden Ross type stream, the way Aiden Ross was doing it, where every rapper was coming through. Except unlike Aiden Ross, you could have like 10 times the rappers come through with like 10 times the clout. And not only rappers, everybody was coming through. Everybody from like Billie Eilish to like Melanie Martinez to Swaley and Slim Jimmy to fucking like Michael Jackson, if he was alive today, would be going to Icebox, all right? Everybody is out here going to Icebox. Hey, is that Balin? Oh yeah, he did. He, Balin went to Icebox, came to Atlanta, did a show, or not came to Atlanta, he lives in Marietta, I believe. Something like that. FaZe went up on stage with him in one of his videos uh, to like hold the camera, basically. And I gotta get FaZe to talk about these stories. Did I show any picture? I showed the picture of James Harden, right? That was from Rafi's birthday. So, I have, um, I have a lesson to the photographers out there watching this, right? Or just camera operators in general. And this is something I should have learned very, very early on, but it, it literally took me years to fully understand this concept. And this is piggybacking off of what I said when I was talking about Shum, where I was talking about like, um, there was only two times where I was ever praised for my photo work. And those two times I focused not on what I wanted, but I focused entirely on the task at hand. So like, when you're doing a job or a gig, right? You do only the thing that you're there to do, okay? You do no less and no more. Don't go out searching for other opportunities because you're not paparazzi. There's a huge difference between being a photographer who earns the respect from others, who like gets the job done versus paparazzi, okay? Like whenever me and Sham and FaZe would go out to take these pictures, um, we would just be like, we would, the job would be get cool pictures of Sham for his Instagram. That was the job, right? And sometimes some other people would clout, some other celebrities would show up and uh, we would always try to get pictures of them. Uh, me and FaZe both, we would make this stupid mistake when we were like first starting out. Uh, you know, like Bow Wow, Quentin Miller, when I was in Miami, Flo Rida, all these people, like, random people show up, um, and you just, you're like, ooh, opportunity to get a picture, right? Just the people that are around, you're already getting pictures of, like, them together, you might as well get a picture of them in it, you know? But I was like, 
I always say, nowadays I always say, photo ops are photo ops. Oh, I just got a message, hold on. On Fiverr. I'm working with this dude on some Discord bots. But yeah. Photo ops are faux de ops, okay? People have their own complex personal relationships with each other. And you may be screwing things up by taking pictures of someone that you're not supposed to when you already swore allegiance to someone else who has beef with that guy, things like that, you know? And at this point, we didn't understand this concept like when we were kids, when we were taking these pictures. The thing is, is like, when you're hanging around these people and there's constantly celebrities, you know, fill, coming in and out of like your surroundings, like when we went to the birthday party of Rafi Juma and um, this guy actually, he's one of the people of the family who owns Icebox. So this was 2017. We went to this dude's birthday party. Man, I remember when they had like 400k followers. And who's the guy that they're following? Uh, what's it called? Lil Baby or? Ah, Sax. Yeah, occasionally they'll follow one person, but then they'll always go back to following zero people after a certain certain period of time. Maybe they're doing some kind of partnership or something. Who knows? But yeah, um, James Harden shows up to this guy's birthday party, right? And uh, we wanted to get pictures of him. It was so dumb looking back on it. It's so cringe. Like, um, the way we would try to take pic we would try, we would literally try to like, at least me, I was trying to like sneak a picture in, like, like on paparazzi. It was the stupidest thing ever. You don't do that, okay? The lesson to photographers out there, you don't do that. You go there, you get the job done, and that's it. Even though we could have gotten pictures of James Harden if we tried, right? We could, we could have pictures of James Harden in our portfolio. We instead would have done a lot better if we had just focused on Chum and nobody else. Not even the Icebox people. Just Chum and nobody else. That was our job. In fact, we met another photographer there. Greg, uh, the wedding photographer guy who works for Icebox, who was like their family photographer. But yeah, we met him there, and he was like a much more experienced photographer, and he we were talking about all these things. He was telling us... Actually, that was the first time I ever learned uh, what aperture was. Not like aperture as in uh, the exposure like concept, but... Aperture is in the company who um, allows you to rent equipment from them. And it was so dumb because like we were going around basically acting like paparazzi and he was focusing on the job at hand. He was just taking pictures for this guy's birthday. That's all he was doing. And they probably got some great pictures. And we got some good, got a couple of good pictures here and there of Sham. But um, it was mostly FaZe that got him, not me. And even though at the time... Sham only had like 10k followers on Instagram. You got to understand, I should have understood. You focus on the job that you're given. Okay, you focus on the person that you're working for because it legitimizes yourself as a person who gets the job done and is loyal to the client that he's working for. This is actually, this is what allows you to go work with the other clients like the James Hardens who will notice you from a distance doing your job and go like, Okay, I want that guy because he's clearly dedicated to his work and he's clearly loyal rather than these paparazzi who are loyal to nobody and who are dedicated to going to the highest bidder. That's what's actually impressive because your value as a photographer, only like 2% of your value as a photographer comes from your ability to take pictures. The rest of it comes from other skills and life lessons you've learned along the way. Because like, like loyalty, because let's say... I'm with James Harden taking pictures, right? Hypothetically. And if I'm still in the same mindset, what happens if LeBron James enters the room? All right? Am I going to ditch my client just to go take pictures of the other guy? No. I don't want to have my uh, relationship with James Harden compromised and have it look badly upon me because now I'm just going to the highest bidder. Then what happens if Michael Jordan enters the room? And I, I, I'm, I'm taking pictures of LeBron James. Then I'm going to go to the highest bidder then? There's, the thing is, there's always a bigger fish. There's never an end to it. Always. There's never going to be... If you're always going to the highest bidder, there will always be a highest bidder. A higher bidder than who you're working for. You're never going to have any loyalty to anyone then. 
I'm here to do the job that I've been given. And if my job, hypothetically, is to take pictures for James Harden, that's it. And I should have had that same mentality when I was taking pictures with Sham. And you're supposed to have the same mentality when taking pictures for anyone, even if they don't have 10,000 followers the way Sham did. Even if you're going to work with, like, a random client and they'll abandon you, you don't abandon them. You learn loyalty. It doesn't matter how big the fish is that comes along. You swore an allegiance to the fish that you have. You work on fishing for that fish. Because think about it. Why would a, that other client, the bigger client, ever work with you? Right? Considering the kind of person that you are. I'm sure people like James Harden have experienced this. People who are like these A-list, B-list, C-list celebrities have all had to have experienced this from time to time again and again and again with like legitimate paparazzi and like legitimate uh, uh, photographers where there's a clear differentiation that these celebrities experience. Um, like, hey, these people are loyal, these people are not. At a certain point, these celebrities, like the James Hardens, right, the A-listers, they would have experienced this sort of thing enough to where even unconsciously, even without even realizing it, they see people like me coming from a mile away. He knew that we didn't bring any value to him, which is why the moment we step inside, like he saw, he saw us, bro. He saw us, and from the moment he saw us, he knew the kind of person we were. He knew just from looking at us how inexperienced we were because we weren't focused on taking pictures in that very moment. We weren't working every second that we had to, to have this opportunity to take pictures. Taking pictures is an opportunity. He sees us, he sees our camera, and then he like points at us um, and uh, he's like, you guys right there. Because we're uh, like, we're trying to be really subtle about it. Like we don't have a camera or whatever. And he points at us and he's like, don't get any pictures of me. And then he moves on. That's all he says. If we had instead focused hard on the job at hand, um, like we, we really didn't. I mean, FaZe did for the most part, but I really didn't. But if I had a focus on the job at hand, then I wouldn't have held us back so much in so many different instances. Maybe then these A-list guys would see that. And instead of us approaching them going, hey, can I be paparazzi for you? They'd approach us and go, I like the way you work. Let me get your contact. Which, which has happened, by the way. It's so stupid. I'm so stupid for not realizing it. This has happened in these photography journeys that I've had. We've seen it all, bro. Everything from like being super desperate just to like do free work for some clients to clients like begging to work with us. Everything in between, we've seen it all. And besides, like this is something you should know as a photographer. Nobody actually likes paparazzi and the way that they act. Nobody really wants them to be around. So here's my advice, okay? When you're entering a creative field like photography, it requires a lot more than just being good at taking photos. There's too many instances where like other skills made much more of an impact than the pure skill of photography. Like the ability to, to drive any car, no matter the size, drive people around with loud music playing, people smoking weed in the car, even though I don't smoke, but I have to handle them hotboxing the car and still manage to drive. Um, the ability to, to keep up with what people are saying, you know, to, to understand a bunch of different accents, the ability to understand what kind of photos they want, the, the ability to take candid photos without being intrusive, with, no, having the experience to know, okay, I got to watch my step, I got to step properly so I don't step on any cables on this stage uh, while I'm moving around, while I'm trying to keep up with these people taking candid photos, right? or take photos without being noticed, the ability to withstand uh, a lot of cold or a lot of heat, uh, the ability to stand itself for a long period of time, um, uh, the ability to manage equipment without it getting stolen. I gotta manage all these different batteries and these cameras and these chargers and this gimbal and all stuff. The ability to hide these things without it being seen, you know, the ability to look nice as a photographer but not look nicer than the person that you're trying to take pictures for. Um, and then there's also a huge different uh, editing aspect of it. A lot of people know how to edit photos. They don't know how to make, uh, they don't know how to warp photos in a way to make girls look more curvy without actually uh, uh, liquefying the backgrounds of 
those photos the way Sniper Wolf does in her Instagram photos. So, so like, there's a million different skills that people need to have to do these sorts of creative endeavors. And almost none of the skills that you actually build have anything to do with the endeavor itself, like the ability to make connections or uh, uh, back people up in, in situations where they're trying to argue with somebody, you know? I've had to do that so many times where, like, Sean was talking to somebody, he's like, hey, guys, aren't I right on this? And I would need to, like, say some, like, scientific backing for this sort of thing. Or, like, just give, give, give people good vibes. Nobody wants to be around somebody with bad vibes. Ultimately, what your clients want is, is good pictures, right? But let's get to the heart of the matter. Why do they even want good pictures? They want to live a good life. You, you, go, you take all the steps. You go down the entire path of why they want this. Okay, they, because of this. Well, why do they want that? It's, they want to have a good life. They want to have fun. They want to enjoy themselves, right? They want less stress. If you can, if you have these skills, if you can roll up weed for them, then you hold way more value as a photographer who's just going to stick around and take pictures, right? If you can offer good advice in any situation, if you have cool life experiences and you can tell cool stories, if you have good taste in music and you know what to play on the ox, if you always come prepared, you know, you always come in clutch. If like people sit, tell you, best compliment I ever received was this dude was like, hey, bro, you always come in clutch. If you always have chargers for people, you know, different phone chargers, stuff like that, I recommend actually not even carrying around phone chargers, carry around a wireless charger because every phone uses a wireless charger. It's a universal charger. Everything uses Qi charging now. People want to keep you around. If you can add more value to these people's lives, if you can contact sponsors for them and be the middleman, hey, bro, I got you. There's this brand in Atlanta, a uh, local brand, and they sell uh, merchandise. Here, they want you to wear this shirt for an Instagram photo. So when we do a photo shoot today, you can do this. And here's $500 that they, that they sent. I'll take 100 out of it, you know, just as my cut for managing the work. They'll earn so much more money having you around they'll, they'll want you to be around if you can if you can move swiftly in crowded environments and not bump into people and break your camera uh if you can carry a heavy backpack uh with like water bottles for everybody else you know if you can be the person that they want you to be they'll keep you around you know and none of these things but all these skills that you can have all these skills none of them matter if you aren't loyal Loyalty is one of these core skills you have to have. If it isn't there, everything else is out the window. So my advice to any photographers watching this or anybody in any creative field where you're working with bigger clients than you, uh, or not even bigger clients than you, clients in general, big or small, actually particularly small clients, if you're going to pursue this, then screw everything else you have going on. Focus on the task at hand when you have a task. Focus on your job, your purpose. Think deeply about what your client wants. And whenever you're, even if, you're, even if you think you're doing the job right, take a step back and reevaluate consistently every, like, every few hours or so. Like, am I doing exact? What does my client need from me? Right? If my client had a second mind, had a second version of themselves, what would they want that version to be doing? Right? What, how can I help my client in the, in the best way possible? Forget what you want for yourself, okay? Think about it from their perspective. Do they want you leaving them to go take pictures of some other like random ass people? No. If you have a job, you do it. You don't deviate. Imagine if you if you went to your lawyer and you, you paid him and all that, right? You got you retained him and all that. And he agreed to do everything that you said to do, and he agreed to defend you in court or something, right? He agreed to fight the other guy in court and to try to prove the other guy wrong. And then the other guy decides to, in, in, the, in the court, literally inside the court, on the day of the court date, the other guy goes, hey, uh, lawyer, uh, that guy, my, my, en my enemy's lawyer, my op opposing team's lawyer, he's talking about your lawyer, he goes, hey, I'll pay you more right now on the spot. Or maybe the other person has just has more clout. Right? And there's a televised event. And your lawyer wants the publicity. Would you be okay with your lawyer just throwing you under the bus so that he can go to the highest bidder, bidder just to further his own career? No. And you know what? 
In that case, that lawyer would have such a terrible reputation, nobody would ever hire him again. I remember, I remember seeing on Sham's face when we went to that Dunkin' Donuts charity event, when I was supposed to be taking pictures of him. I, I got plenty of pictures. And in my opinion, and even so to, to this day, I believe I had gotten enough pictures. I did what I was supposed to do. I got more than enough. However, the phrase, in my opinion, should never be said when you're trying to visualize someone else's vision. It's not about your opinion. I should have stuck with the job. I should have said, in Sham's opinion, I should keep going. So I should have kept going. When I was there, I was uh, talking to one of these dealers. Um, I remember looking at, Sham was looking at me repeatedly. And I was, he, there was a dealer who was at this blackjack table. And I was just making conversation with him instead of doing my job. And I remember Sham was like sitting there, down at the time uh, with his family. So he couldn't say anything. It was like a very respectful. There was like a lecture going on. Um, so he couldn't like say anything to me. But I, I remember like the look he was, he was given occasionally whenever he'd look in my direction. He wasn't looking at me. He was just trying to look for me. And uh, in my head, I was like, I was, it was so stupid, bro. I was like, I can't take pictures at this angle because it's stupid. And I already got plenty of angles of him. I'll, he'll never use these pictures. But that's such a stupid mindset to have. It's, it's, it's a mindset of every starting photographer. And it's a mindset that you need to grow out of. Ditching your client to go try to make a new connection. That's not what you do when you're out on the field, right? When you're out in the trenches. Everyone always says like, stuff like, oh, you, you're doing the bare minimum, right? In other things, in other fields. Like you always hear phrases that people say like, you're doing the bare minimum. Or like, uh, you're not winning in life because you don't do enough. You gotta, you work less than you should. You gotta do more. You gotta do more and more and more and more and more. Here's my advice. Take my advice and learn from it. If you're a starting photographer and you don't wanna, hold up one sec. But yeah, you, you really don't want to learn this kind of lesson the hard way, okay? If you're, if you're in the middle of a job, right? Here's my advice. Think deeply about what you're doing. And people will give you this sort of advice in other fields. Like, oh, you want to do more, right? Understand that you, whatever your job is, do no less than what you should, but also do no more than what you're supposed to do, okay? You're getting paid to do a job. That's what you committed to, or even without pay, with or without pay. Everyone knows doing less than what you're paid to do is bad, right? Or less than what you committed to do is bad. Here's my wisdom. Don't just do no less. Don't do any more. Do no less and no more than what your job is. Don't go out here trying to further your career when you're already in the middle of a job. That's like if you're in the middle of a mainline GTA mission and you start doing a side mission while you're doing them. No, you know, the human brain can only focus on one thing at a time. So respect that, understand that and focus on the task at hand. Worry about everything else later. And this sort of mentality of like, people doing more than what their job entails. A lot of like starting photographers will really try the strategy because like the freelance photography game is really weird and there's no rule book and nobody really to like teach you the game um, and like the unspoken industry rules. But I'm, I'm gonna give you this rule right now, okay? There's no rule book, but if there was a rule book, this would be in it, okay? This is my personal advice from the tiny amount of industry work I've done in photography, okay? Don't just do no less than what you're asked to do. You already know that. Don't do any more than what you're asked to do. It's an abandonment of someone else's loyalty and a betrayal of their trust to go out and do other things that they don't want you to do. You signed on for a job and your job is not necessarily to, to take pictures of someone. Your job is to visualize their vision and understand what they want and do your best to make that happen. Okay, don't betray the loyalty of the people you're working with. That's my advice to the young Padawans out there hoping to make it big. That's my, that's the the whole that's the James Harden story. That's what I learned from James Harden.
Do you still have that video of like the G Technique guy or whatever? With like the with yeah, the, yeah, with yeah, the exclusive yeah, yeah. games dude, Lambo? You know how fucking lame that dude is? Dude, what do you mean? So like at one of the Whips by Way shows, he was like, Yo, I'll pay fifty bucks for a small video. And this was like twenty nineteen. Fifty. Like, right, I bet I got you. Yeah, I'm like, I was fucking broke back then. I, I didn't know what I was doing. Okay, twenty nineteen. But twenty nineteen was wasn't. When did you start working with Icebox? Uh, this is early twenty nineteen. Not after okay, I okay, working. okay. Early, early. Right, and then I was like, all right, and it was like a quick, quick video. I was like, I was like already getting paid at the show for a different video. Uh huh. And so I was just like, you know what? I'll just make an extra fifty bucks, making like a two second video. Like it took me like ten minutes to make at most. You know, but mm -hmm. I was already getting paid like hundreds for the other show. Did you ever I work with him after that? No, dude. You know, like, I was like, here, here's a video. And he was like, all right, but I got you on the money. I'm like, huh, okay. And the dude never fucking sends it, right? And I'm gonna icebox a few months ago, like probably early, like end of last year, right? Mm -hmm. I was chilling. And then he walks in. Now, I don't even care about the money, bro. I'm like, dude, it's fucking fifty bucks. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, Zom, I just, I just wasted fifty bucks in a goddamn restaurant today. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to like waste it, but I was like, all right, so you know what happens sometimes, whatever. Right, so I don't give a fuck about it. But then he's like, "Oh, did not owe you some money." I'm like, "Dude, you could have like completely ignored me and like not even mentioned it. And I would not have cared, right?" But he's like, "You know what? Maybe Sean paid me. Whatever." I already knew he wasn't gonna. He's like, "Did not owe you some money." He's like, "Oh, yeah, let me get your number, bro. I'm gonna pay you back right now." I'm like, "All right, bet." Oh my god! He never said no. To I'm like, I'm like, dude, this, this is a grown up. You should have been dude. like, you should have been like, "No, nah, I'm up now." Yeah, no, nah, dude. I'm just like, I literally don't give a fuck. I'm like, bro. It's 50 bucks. Yeah, you're a lot more mature Why than me, bro. Like I would have made fun of him at that point. Yeah. No, dude, he's shopping for jewelry, right? I'm, hear me out. He's shopping for jewelry. And he can't cough up 50 bucks. I don't care about the 50 bucks. Did he buy anything? Yeah, he bought a ring. Oh, There's my God. Some shit. Yeah, dude, fucking, these guys are retarded, bro. Like, that's what the fucking normies are. They're just stuck in the Matrix. I'm like, dude, it's 50 bucks. I don't care. It's been... Fucking three years. It's been like three or four years, bro. How do you remember that shit? Wait, isn't, then, like, isn't that... uh That Lambo was like exclusive games, right? Yeah, he still has it. Do you ever see it? Like, isn't Icebox right next to exclusive games shop? Yeah, I see it all the time. Oh. 